Hey guys, and welcome to our next episode of Sketchbook Sundays. I hope you guys are doing well wherever you are around the world. Happy Sunday to you guys out there. So sorry I was late. Like technical difficulties, you already know it's not a creative girl show unless some sort of mayhem and craziness is going down. What is popping, you guys? Thank you for showing up and showing out. Happy Sunday to everybody. Welcome to the stream. I hope you guys are showing up. Welcome to the stream. Mm. <laughs> well, you seen the title. It's, it's going to be Mayhem. So you seen the title. I'm going to show you guys basically how to get creative in your sketchbook, creative ways to fill your sketchbook. And the sketchbook is the perfect place to get creative and to try out new ideas and all the things. Today we're doing some vintage florals. It's going to be really, really exciting. And FYI, if I sound like Snuffleupagus, it's because I'm sick. <laughs> so I'm like kind of battling the cold a little bit, but we here. Started at the bottom, now we are here, okay? I was going to show up regardless for real. I was going to show up regardless. <laughs> oh, man. Like, the one thing I was like, you know what? You need to turn that. The one thing I'm like, yo, you need to turn that down. <laughs> it's it, But, again, it's not my stream unless there's some sort of mayhem kind of going on and some sort of craziness for real. But happy Sunday to you guys. So we're using gouache today, but you can use any sort of materials that you have available. I already have my palette off to the side, as you guys can see. We're using acrylic gouache, which is a little more where it like dries a lot quicker. And it dries permanently. But if you have regular gouache, like I really enjoy jelly gouache and stuff like that. And I also have my water over here to get you some clean water. I feel like it's best to have two things of water, especially when you're dealing with watercolors um, or gouache. Because you can basically bounce between the two things of water okay <laughs> oh my god i can't so much going on it's insanity for real so let's get started i kind of didn't want to lay out my paints right away i wanted to figure that out Figure out what was going on because I was having technical difficulties before we even got on here. So I was like, let me figure that out before we even start. Any sort of nonsense goes on. Because you know, when it goes down when you're alive, for real. That's when all the drama happens. And, you know. All right, so I'm putting out some green paint because we're going to do this floral. And it's a really beautiful floral. I got kind of inspiration in the image from it was this beautiful floral or botanical painter as they're called um from like the 17th century um from the New York Museum and I really love if you guys don't know me you won't know that I really really enjoy flower painting besides doing portraits as well as, I'm just putting down different colors like the primaries, red, greens, blues, stuff like that. But you can use anything you want. If you want the traceable or the coloring page for this particular project, you can head over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash creativegirlcolor. And you can get the whole shebang. You don't have to worry about drawing this in if you're not that good at drawing. And... So yeah, if you don't really know me, you won't know this, but I do enjoy a good floral painting, portrait painting, the whole, the whole lot of it. I enjoy all of that. I think I enjoy a lot of different like aspects of like just being an artist, exploring different things. My hand is like so messy. It's so messy. The other day I went to the store. I went to like the art store and I got me some a new 
gouache. If you don't know what that is, look at that. The white gouache. Big ass tube of that. And wash is quite expensive though, funny enough, right? For real, for real, if you really think about it. Like if you look at a tube of like the big acrylic paints that I usually buy, those tubes, especially if you do like a craft paint where you get way more, maybe eight ounces, four ounces, yada yada yada. Um let me that's my paper oil. So glued it. Anyway, you, the same thing, if, if you was to buy the same thing with acrylic paint, you would get a whole lot more. But this big, this like small tube of 40 milliliter type white gouache was like $7. It's insane. Okay. It's insane. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm saying. It can get quite pricey for real. It's insane. Okay, so I put out the different colors. Of course, I got my spray right here. I put up the reference photo for you guys. It's a gorgeous piece that somebody actually painted, like I said, back in the 17th century. And I actually designed it, added my own little flare, like a little tree under here, some birds. I'm gonna paint a bird and I never do that. I never do that. But I always admire people that are able to paint a bird and, and just add like little different aspects. We're gonna see how the bird looks. Okay. The bird may end up not looking like a bird, but we're gonna go with it. <laughs> the bird very very well may not look like a bird, but we're gonna go with it today for real. <laughs> okay, so I put out my different what else did I need? Okay. I put out some different. So I'm doing two different types of blue. Um uh, and any one type of yellow is fine. I mean, you could do a yellow ochre, and the yellow ochre should give you uh, a good variety of stuff. It should give you, like, a good variation on the green paint. <coughs> I'm going to be coughing. Today. That's the joys of having kids. Because they give you all sorts of diseases. All sorts of fun diseases. <laughs> that you don't even know what's going on. All right. I'm going to spray. And then we got our blue and our white over here. <clears throat> And I thought I had, oh, because I was like, I know I had, what's the name, hold on, got to get out my holes, I won't be hacking up a storm, okay. And I could have swore I had magenta. That's my favorite color. And actually, they was, I mean, magenta is a pretty popular color. It was actually sold out when I went to look for it last time. Ooh, la la la. Um, look at my little thing right here. Oh, 
This is just red. I need an actual... I can relate. I was painting this morning and I got it all over my hands. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. That, I mean, there's no way to avoid it. No. Have to be able to I thought I had my magenta. I thought I had taken that out, but I didn't. What medium do I mostly use? Hmm. I mostly use, um, nowadays I mostly use gouache. That's the medium that I love the most. Right now, at least. Um, but of course, acrylic is always, you know, at the forefront of a lot of things. Especially if I'm doing... It just depends on what I'm doing. Like, if I'm doing a portrait and it's going to be like a commission or something like that. Or something that's really, really important. I usually use acrylic in... But... Other projects, fun projects, where I'm just doing a lot of different varieties of stuff. I'm going to put out this neon electric pink because I cannot find my magenta to save my life. And I need some sort of red, rosy color to, to offset uh, this, this stark red. So, yeah. For the most part, it is gouache and acrylic. That's like my main things that I'm doing right now. What's your favorite mediums that you're doing right now? Hmm. Okay. Spray it. Spray it and love it. Now, this neon color... You know, back in the day, they would never use this neon color. Matter of fact, this neon color wouldn't exist back in the day. If you kind of look at the index, kind of, sometimes I geek out on paint. So if you kind of look at the the index of, like, the type of paint that was around back then, especially in the 1700s, 1800s, you would never have this sort of bright neon color because it didn't exist. Matter of fact, one of the oldest colors that they have around is um, yellow ochre. That's one of the oldest colors they have around right now. I'm like, okay, girl. And I do use yellow ochre quite a bit. I'm still looking for this color, y'all. <laughs> I'm still looking for this color. Wow. I can't believe it, like, ran away somewhere. Huh. All right, I'm going to put out a little bit of this yellow ochre also. Yes, art materials can get, um, and get them uh, with a very large canvas and some paints, very pricey. Yeah, exactly. Super pricey, these things can get, especially depending on how much you paint. And the quality of stuff that you're kind of doing, it definitely can be like that. Now, even though I have a 9 by 12 um, like sketchbook or whatever, I actually went in and I put some Arches watercolor paper and I taped it or like laid it down inside of my sketchbook. As you can see, I have other stuff in this sketchbook. I use this sketchbook for. That's why I say it's creative ways to kind of fill your sketchbook. 
and like putting ideas down. Da 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 da. You see, I like vintage stuff. Look, I have like all of these posters and stuff at the back. And stuff right there. Ones are from like two years ago. But yeah, but in this case, I wanted to have some good, good paper to kind of lay down the things that we need to lay down. So this is why I chose this particular thing. The world is not the same as it was. In fact, let me put this up here. I can actually see my chat. See the chat, chattery. Did you trace or sketch your flower? In? This particular one, most of it is traced in the save time. But I always recommend that you learn how to draw so that, you know, if you want to make something on your own. Okay, let's get started while, and we'll chat about more about that. But. If you want to actually like do some art, good art on your own and stuff like that, you always want to make sure that you're doing this stuff. Um, it just makes sense to be able to know how to draw and stuff. But tracing has been uh, a good, good thing for many artists over the years, even people in the 17th century. It goes back a very long time. Don't feel bad if you have to, but I know how to draw it though, so I don't necessarily have to do it, but I do it at the same time. And it's it's especially good if you're doing a commission. Like anybody got time for that? <laughs> we ain't got time for that. So I'm mixing a little bit of that. You can see that red color in there. And I'm going to come in with this, and I'm going to water that down pretty much a lot. Because this is gouache, and I don't want it to, like, overpower what I'm doing. And I'm going to go in. And I'm going to go over this. And I'm going to go over this with a light wash. Because it's pretty much a red rose. The flowers back in the 18th century look totally different than the flowers today. It seemed like everything was just richer. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it, but it just seemed like it was. It was everything was just a whole lot richer. Oh, <laughs> what do you have? What do you guys have going on today? Happy Sunday. Did everybody go out? Did you have to go? To, did you go to the church today? What did you do? I'm getting into that green. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them down below, too. Like, Now, I did do a poll to see what you guys wanted to paint because I wanted to make sure, like, just to see what you guys are interested in. And most of you wanted to paint flowers. Next weekend, next Sunday, we'll do our February favorites where we'll illustrate... And I'm like the favorite things that we enjoy for the month. So I'm going to get into this green, but try not to mix it into your red because those two are complementary colors. So if you mix them together, it's going to turn really dark. Yeah. 
Rita, hey. On the way home um, from the store, no church today. Okay, yes. You see, I'm getting, as I tell you guys, don't do it. I'm mixing this green in here. <laughs> I'm mixing the red into my green, and you see it's turning brown. Rita, I was looking out for your um your DM about the meetup thing. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see your your DM. I don't know if you did or not. So I mixed a little yellow ochre in with my green because I wanted to give me like a earthy, vintagey tone. I mean, you could make it like a golf ball green, super vibrant, super over the top, but this is like a vintagey type of flower, and I don't want it to be over the top, so I toned down that golf ball green with the yellow ochre. You know what I'm saying? That's going to give me like a muted green. And two. Gonna get a smaller brush. The very thin, kind of like see that's even two golf ball green. So I'm gonna go in. And we're going to add a little bit of white to bump that up. That's kind of sort of going to give me what I want. Kind of sort of, right? You can add a little brown into it, like, because sometimes you have, like, brown leaves and stuff like that. Okay. A little bit of brown leaves. Trying not to get my hand in this stuff. And going in with a little bit of a, that cadmium yellow, which is a very bright yellow. And because I want a different variation of green, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think this is the one. It's definitely right up my alley. You guys know I love a good flower, okay? I know it. Yeah. 
So instead of over here. I'm trying to think about what they would actually paint with back then, you know? Most of, most of the time, they probably paint with a lot of yellow ochre. I wish it wasn't driving. Yeah, take your time. Be safe out there. You know, I'm going to keep this up on the channel. You can always come back and watch, babe. No worries. Or you can always just listen to me ramble. <laughs> Ramble about the nuances of uh, vintage painting. No, I didn't DM you yet. I will. Okay, cool, 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 cool. You always have to say what. I'm going to get into a little bit of a darker color. Why I keep singing that song? Why do I keep singing that song? We don't know. Do not know. Put a little bit of white in there. It's not quite giving me what I want. And this is just the first pass, so we're going to have to go back over it again. If you have, it depending on the type of paint you're using, too, and the type of paper you're using, it's going to depend on how much uh, layering you need to do. <laughs> like these upper layers about it are really light colors of the So yeah, depending on your paint, you know, it's going to dictate pretty much what you need to do. Gonna do. What's the name of this flower? I think it's just a rose. But it's like in full bloom. And this is a vintage rose because it's a depiction of a rose that existed in the 17th century. And you probably wouldn't find a rose that looks like this right now. You really wouldn't. And it's like in full, full bloom. Just like one of my favorite flowers, um, the broken tulip. Broken tulip doesn't exist. One of my all-time favorite flowers. And it's funny because the broken tulip existed then, right? It existed because um 
it was a it was a DNA issue with the flower. Something wrong with the flower. That's why it would look it looked like that. If you ever look up broken tulips, you'll know what I'm talking about. But they have these distinctive kind of like red stripes in them. You pulled over good. Good, 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 good. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, so it was, I mean, if you really look at the flower, and if you follow my 100 Flower Challenge over on Instagram, you'll know kind of what I'm talking about. All right, so now and if you're enjoying today's stream, you guys, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps my channel out. And it's a good free way to support my channel, you know? Share it with your family members, mama, your sister, your brother. <laughs> people that enjoy like relaxing painting videos, you know those people. There's a few floral painters, like, if you if you ever see my Instagram, my Instagram is made up of, like, two sets of people. And it's, like, the people that create, um, some people, I, fo I follow, like, a ton of people that do flowers and flower painting and florists and stuff like that. And then the other side of it is... Um, you can really tell a lot about a person by their Instagram and just, you know, the type of stuff that they do on their social media. I also have a lot of animal um stuff on my Instagram as well. A lot of animal videos, funny cat videos. It's so crazy because when YouTube first came out, that's all YouTube was. It was like funny cat videos and like weird people doing weird stuff. And I remember seeing YouTube for the first time. And this was like 12 years ago, maybe 15 years ago when YouTube first came out. And I was like, ew, bloody hell. I was like, what are these people doing? Like, who was... I, was, I remember distinctly because I was like, I was like, who the hell wants to see anything about your life? <laughs> That was like one of the first things that I thought about. I was like, who wants to see anything about your life? I was like, nobody cares. Nobody wants to see anything about your life, girl. And here I am. On here. Talking about flowers in my life. <laughs> so never say never. You know what I mean? That's the moral of that story. Don't be too quick to judge and, and whatever, because you never know what's going to go down for real. Never know where life is going to take you. That's why I find it funny when people are like, I would never do that. I'm like, really? You would never do that, huh? Interesting. I never say never anymore. I was, I'd just be like, oh, I, you know, that don't sound interesting right now. You never know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you never know, Becky. Like, what? <laughs> Never know. 
All right, I'm just slowly adding a little more. Green and brown, kind of go hand in hand. It's all right to add a little brown in your green. It's all right, girl. What have you guys been watching? You know I always ask this question. What were you guys doing? Oh, has anybody been watching the Soul Food um challenge? What is it called? Soul Food something. Cooking challenge cook off on um on HBO Max. It's a, it's like groundbreaking. They've never had like a black cooking show. So I'm like blown away. They never had like an exclusively black cooking show. It's always been, you know, other cultures. It's more like you, you know, you may see a black person in a cooking show, but you never have a cooking show. Where it's like exclusively, exclusively black people that's on the panel as well as that's actually cooking and they cooking soul food. They had they was making like. What was they making? They was making pe I said pina colada. Not pina colada, girl. Get your life. Uh, they was making peach cobbler. <laughs> peach cobbler? I was like, uh-uh. Not you making peach cobbler. I was like, bitch, I ain't never seen no shit like that before. Not you making peach cobbler. We don't never get no treat like that. I mean, there's a show on um, Food Network. I forgot what it's called, though. I think it's Keeping Up with the Neelys. I don't know if that show that show is on no more. That show was kind of groundbreaking because it like featured a black couple in, um, like, from Georgia, something like that. I don't know. But then... Their marriage fell apart and some craziness happened. And they got they getting a divorce and a whole bunch of dramas going away. Like drama. <laughs> drama. Peach Cobbler sounds mad good, right? Yeah, you said I have to check it out. I don't watch um anything except YouTube. Me too. I'm mostly a YouTube gal. Um, but as far as, like, good movies and shows, I will kind of, like, do it. I will watch it. You know what I mean? But I do like HBO Max, especially for, like, the good movies and shows. But, yeah, check that out, you guys. I mean, because it's good for everybody, for real. It's not even just, like, oh, it's only for black people. But, you know what I mean? If you ever want to know about, like, black culture and stuff like that, yeah. Or maybe you just interested in what we be putting in our food and stuff like that. It's a good, it's a good show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really good show. But I follow a lot of food people on my Instagram, too. I'm not even a foodie, so it's weird. I guess maybe as I get older, I'm more interested in, like, cooking, finding good recipes and stuff like that. But maybe that's what the situation is. Now around the holidays, I feel... Um, I hit up Netflix and Parallax. I don't think I've ever heard of that. 
Other than that, YouTube YouTube watching is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love YouTube. Especially if you have like a pre uh, premium service with YouTube. You'll be able to watch a lot of stuff. Pure Flix. I heard about there's another um there's a thing out called Passion Flix. It's like I don't know how to even explain it. It's like the lifetime of for sexy people or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like weird. It's like lifetime for sexy people or something. So it has like a lot of weird sexy movies on there. I heard a lot of good things about that too. My palette is drying out because I got the fan going. Even though it's winter time, it is like 10 degrees outside right now. <laughs> well, at least uh because I'm in the East Coast, it's 10 degrees for me, but uh Hold up, you guys. Yeah, but I have to put the fan on because I'm gonna fix my thing. Fix it, girl. Fix it. Yeah, it's looking pretty, right? We're not even doing much to it. It's very, very pretty. Very, I mean, it's gorgeous already. Like, yeah. And I'm like, I have so many ideas of, like, things that I want to create and make surrounding flowers and stuff like that. Um... All right, so this next set. Yeah, like the dog people on Instagram. I'll be like, yeah, buddy. I think that you got to like curate. Like, I think that's what it is. I'm like trying to curate my experience on social media because social media is so negative now and like everybody's hurting and just like you know what I mean like upset and da 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 so like yeah I need to curate my experience for real. Woo! That scared the hell out of me. <laughs> that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I forgot to have my um my notifications on. Thank you for the follow. If you over on Twitch, what is popping? Thank you so much for following. Welcome to the Creative Girl Crew, you guys. Oh my god, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I was like, we under attack, y'all. I totally forgot that I was, um. Streaming on Twitch. <laughs> you probably like, how you forget that? That's what happens with the squir the squirrel brain. I'm streaming on Twitch and um you But yeah, you gotta curate your ex your pretty much your experience and stuff.
I swear. If you don't curate your experience, you be seeing some wild stuff on um on social media. And don't even get me started on Twitter. I be on there arguing every week. <laughs> every week I'm arguing with somebody on Twitter. It's like the craziest thing. Every single week I'm arguing with somebody on Twitter. <laughs> like what in the hell? And I be having to catch myself like if you don't go sit down somewhere. Like it was the craziest thing. There's this game, this game that I Oh no no no, I'm doing the wrong thing. Let me see something. Yep. See? Fine. You go go over it with the right color. Put the wrong color in your Yeah, so anyway, this is, um, as you guys, most of you guys know, I basically, oh, you couldn't get into Twitter. Yeah, what's funny is I couldn't get into Twitter either for, like, the longest time I couldn't get into Twitter. Um, but over the years, especially for my business, I've learned to kind of navigate it. And I learned that every, each social media platform has, like, different pacing and different things that you kind of need to do in order to be able to conduct yourself on these different platforms. You know what I'm saying? So, I've kind of learned what the culture is in the in the navigating Twitter. And it's pretty much, you. I mean, there's a lot of positive, fun things on Twitter, but there's also a lot of chaos on Twitter. I mean, we know why, right? And we're not going to get too... I don't like to get political on my YouTube channel. But you know why. It's like chaos and crazy uh, shit that's going on on Twitter. We know who who the culprits are. <laughs> um, but yeah. And especially since Elon took over, it's been absolute insanity. But... And I, it's like, but I do love Twitter though. I'm not even gonna lie to you because it is still like a, a like a close knit community. Like if you find your people on there, you find your people, and it's like you don't have to worry about them unfollowing you or you unfollowing them. It's like you find your people and y'all like tweet to each other every day, every day, every day. It's like very, very, very interactive. So you really got to figure out how to use Twitter if you want to be on there. And also, to, in order to be able to not be freaking triggered by the craziness that goes on <laughs> on Twitter, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting out some brown, y'all. Brown. Ooh, it's drying up my what's the name? Don't dry on me, baby. I'm using purple and I'm putting it into the brown. That's going to make it really dark. Um, but yeah, it's a lot. It's a, it can be a lot though. A lot to you. It can be a lot. And you just gotta figure out, like, get it where you fit in. But there's definitely days where I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not doing that. We're not doing that. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going on there. I'm just gonna leave it and let it do what it do. There it is. It definitely has those days. I don't want to get involved in it, and I refuse to do it. Mm. 
and I refuse to go on there. Definitely has those days for uh Do you think they will ever, um, let me know. Do you think they will ever get rid of YouTube and or in Instagram? Huh. <clears throat> well, I mean, I have my opinions for it. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I've been on social media a very long time. Like, ever since MySpace days, for real. So I know kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, who who's going and who's coming. Instagram is funny because, of course, it's changed a whole lot over the years since it was taken over by um, Zuckerberg or whatever. So it has changed quite a bit, right? Um, however, it's a good platform. The problem is Zuckerberg is super greedy and he wants everybody to pay to play. And it's not good for people that are creatives. And a lot of people are getting burnt out. A lot of people are getting like exhausted from all the content that you have to do. You have to do, do, do. Like, they're pushing reels because he's trying to compete with TikTok. Now, YouTube is on the TikTok thing. They're trying to compete with, with TikTok and stuff like that. And everybody's trying to be TikTok, pretty much. But the problem is, um, that's not going to work. You know what I mean? Because everybody can't be TikTok. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody can't be TikTok. I mean, it's just the most insane thing ever. So as far as I'm concerned, with the way Instagram is going, his pay-to-play attitude, and pushing all of these different things that is not even native to the platform, like Reels, IGTV, all these weird kind of things that he's kind of stealing from other platforms, I can see if he doesn't change something in the next five to ten year, ten more years, I can see face I mean Instagram not existing anymore. Or at the very least being like on his way out, just like MySpace was. And because that's pretty much the problem. People are not, you know what I mean? Like people a lot of these platforms never see the writing on the wall type of thing. They never see the writing on the wall. They're always like, oh, you know, it's always about, you know, 
the advertisers, the bottom line, this, that, and the third. Um, so I feel like Instagram, Facebook will eventually be phased out. I think in the next 20 years, Facebook won't exist. And like I said, unless there's some major changes. Uh, this is part of the reason why I kind of made it my business. And I always advise people to make sure you have like an email list to make sure that you're on all of these different platforms together. You know what I'm saying? So you not put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. So that's pretty much how I feel about that. Now, YouTube, I feel like it's going to be around for a very long time because it's not necessarily, yes, there's a lot of ads. Everywhere is a lot of ads. It's a lot of focusing on trying to compete with TikTok. But you get a lot of, it basically, it, YouTube is considered YouTube universities where everybody goes to learn everything, to find new people, to discover new activities. And it's just getting better and better over the years. You know, now they've introduced live streaming and yada, yada, yada. I feel like it's going to be, it's really going to be a lot of good things kind of coming along with, uh, as far as with YouTube goes. I really don't see that going out of, you know what I mean? I don't really feel like that's going to go out of pocket anytime soon. As long as they don't do nothing wild. You know what I mean? Like, you never know. Because it's always something with social media. But I still don't put all all my eggs in one basket. I have all my stuff is on every platform. It's on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok and you only want to see my stuff on TikTok, my stuff is on TikTok. I have, you know, reels on every platform. I have my videos on every platform. The only long... T this is the only place I put long form content. but. If these place, if these uh social media places don't step up, there's gonna be people that's gonna come in, bust down the door, and take over like TikTok did. And now they're trying to get TikTok out. You know what I mean? Because they're like irritated about the whole situation. Shit. They really like uh uh. We need TikTok out of here. They all kind of like having a meeting. <laughs> They all having a meeting like, uh, we really need TikTok out of here. <laughs> oh, man. But I really feel like TikTok, I mean, not TikTok, but I really feel like now TikTok may end up being gone, at least in the United States, because a lot of people hate TikTok in the United States, like the big people that make decisions. Because they feel like they, they have no control over TikTok. So. No. So that was a really good question, yeah. That's why mostly long term, you know, I'm looking at TikTok. I mean, not TikTok. Good Lord, I got TikTok on the brain. Uh, YouTube is where I'm looking at long term. That's what I'm looking at always. So YouTube is where I'm going to be focused in a lot of my content. This is where, this is the hub. But... Exactly. Frankenstein, no control. Um, I will take notes on whatever I may, I learn. So I will have if they remove this video. If they remove it. Uh, that's what happens when you create Frankenstein. No control. But they did. Exactly. Exactly. So now they're like, everybody shook because of TikTok. It's like, oh my God, not TikTok coming in, you know, thanking them or whatever. 
So now, I mean, and still to this day, I really like TikTok. Like, if I was to, the only reason I don't concentrate a lot of stuff on TikTok is because, um, I don't like the politics that goes around TikTok. Like, it's a lot of, like, back and forth and, like, people, you know? It's kind of a lot that goes with TikTok, you know? And P all of these big companies kind of fighting over it and yada, yada, yada. And, oh, another reason I don't use, I don't focus a lot of my stuff on TikTok also is because Facebook, uh, what is it? Facebook, YouTube, and all these other platforms have teamed up and they make it where if you post anything with a TikTok logo, they basically, for lack of a better word, kind of shadow ban your stuff. And it's hard for, they will not push your content out. Like if I take a reel that I made on TikTok and I try to repurpose it into other areas, it won't pick up because Facebook is hating, YouTube is hating. You know what I mean? That's how brutal it is with TikTok. All right, let's dry it, y'all. Let's dry, dry, dry. Dry it, baby. Hold up, let me put this over here. Uh, my paint is dry out, dry. You hear me? <laughs> Yep, and we're back and better than ever, yeah? Oh, you see the birdie. <laughs> yes, he's like, peekaboo, I see you. So we're going to attempt to make the birdie. We're going to paint him in and do all the things. Yes and yes. We're going to hope for the best. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff that goes on when you, especially when you're doing content creation. And you kind of like trying to get that together or whatever. Oh, my paint is drying like crazy. And why? Because it's like. Yeah, it's like a blue jay. So freaking cute, right? But I need my fan on, though, because my fan. It gets super hot in here with all the lights. And all the stuff going on. Even the computer's generating a lot of heat. So I gotta keep my um my fan on. Let me get some of this blue. So we're gonna color in our little blue jay. I didn't know what this was. <laughs> You know, I don't be painting no flowers. You know, you know, I don't know nothing about no flower. I mean, um, birds. I didn't know what it was. I was like, what? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Let's 
But let's pay. I'm gonna do a, a light wash. Little blue jay. He needs to be outside. <laughs> I'm just taking a wet, um, It's really funny how relaxing like painting flowers can be. It can be super relaxing. So you see, I kind of lifted a lot of that blue out after I put the wash down. So I just took a damp brush and lifted a lot of that out. Have you ever done a sketchbook tour? No, not yet. I'm waiting until I get to the end of the 100 Flower Challenge, and then I'll do a sketchbook tour. Oh, I did do one sketchbook tour, but that was, like, at the very, like, beginning of my YouTube journey. And I was just, like, showing, like, past paintings and stuff like that. I definitely will be doing a sketchbook tour pretty soon. And this is super cute. Like, you can hang it. You can frame it. You can hang it up somewhere. Stuff like that, you know? It'd be super cute. All right, let's see if we could dry once again. Hey, so we're back. <clears throat> Swear. This is one of the worst years ever. I think I've been sick nonstop.
nonstop. I've been sick. That's what happens when you have kids. You're like, oh, you you sick? You're not feeling well? Okay, too bad. Too bad. <laughs> oh, man. I'm getting out a little bit of this red. Because I want to go in and start filling in the shadows in inside of these flowers. As you can see, I always go... Light to dark when it comes to gouache versus I wouldn't necessarily do that um I wouldn't necessarily do that when I was doing acrylic I, I wouldn't do it. I'm going in with that and then I'm wiping on my brush. Taking that damp brush and going in on with that purple to make a darker red. I got a feeling that's what I'm going to need. Yes, indeed. Detailing now. Detailing. <laughs> I know, right? I, well, you know I love pink and red by now. You know that, so. That's what we're going to have, pretty much. I'm just going in between. <laughs> Going in between, doing a little details.
So when I'm not going to add that little... I'm not going to add the really dark, 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 you know? I still have that red on my, um... On my brush, but it's like very little. So now I don't have anything on there. Taking a little bit in, baby. <clears throat> Kind of like the tricky thing when it comes to um doing like roses or anything that has a lot of petals is because you're gonna be doing a lot of shading trying to get those little nuances together. You're not that little. Thing. When I first started painting, I really didn't understand how to do it. To me, it was just a lot of mess, right? It just didn't make any sense to me. I was like, what? Wrong? And I kind of did not know where the flower ended and where it began. It would be so frustrating trying to figure it out. I had no idea. <laughs> no idea. Um, are you going to detail the leaves? Yeah, so we're going to do a little bit of detail on the leaves. Again, you could do a lot of, like, flowers are kind of similar to portraits. That's why I like them, because they are kind of, like, the same, but in different ways, because, um, <clears throat> like, portraits, you have to do a lot of detailing to make it look good. A lot of layers and flowers are the same way, especially when it comes to, um, like, stuff like this. You can spend quite a bit of time. I'm not going to spend all day, right? We're not going to be here all day, but... <laughs> like, we're not going to be here all day. But, um... We'll be here. Getting into the thick of it, though. Yeah, mostly the the hardest part is usually like the middle of the flower. That tends to be the darkest part of the flower. That's usually the 
the most problems you're gonna get. And I'd rather add purple. Of course, I'm not as good as the 18th century, like, illustrator. Like, they did that in watercolor on top of it. Like, there was no gouache. It was like, damn. That's some serious skill right there. Serious skill. That's some hyper realism right there. If we doing that hyper realism though. I know I said the cat. <laughs> but I prefer to mix purple in with uh red to make the dark bits because it goes a lot it goes together a lot better than black. Like if you add black to red, that's a good way to darken it up too, but it'll make it too dark. First purple is like you know. Purple is pretty much a derivative of exactly like drawing whimsical houses and like fairies and cats flying through the wind and stuff like that. See, you get me. Come on. You get me. You know what it is. All right. So this other part of the, the drawing or whatever you want to call it. I'm not gonna get too. I'm gonna do like a light wash of this red because this is like the outer part of the flower, and we don't want that to be too dark. That makes sense. Hopefully, it makes sense. I don't know. I don't want it to be too dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, <clears throat> most of y'all know that I like period movies. So, period, this goes right along. With my period movie fantasy, like, I'm a, you know, I belong in a, in a 15th century, <laughs> or like a Victorian time, you know, period movie, and I'm like a wealthy heiress, you know. 
like a Ida B. Wells or something. Doing watercolors in my study. And I'm like, Jeffrey, fetch my water. <laughs> Instead of me being in the house, like, what the hell? <laughs> Fetching my own water, okay? Let me live out my dreams, y'all. Live out my dreams. Let her live out her dreams, okay? You know, you get some like fresh flowers and you get somebody brings you fresh flowers every day. You put it like in your study. Your water's always full. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over. Move it over. Back in the time person. Yeah, exactly. I am one of those people. My family don't understand it either. <laughs> I was trying to get my daughter to watch a period movie with me. Like, uh, she's in her 20s. I was trying to get her to watch a, a period movie about Dido Bell. It's basically like this. She was the daughter of a, what is he, cat, like ship captain, whatever. He was a white ship captain and his mother, and her mother was a slave, right? So, yeah, there you go. Anyway. Look it up. Most people know the story. Hopefully you know the story. But the history is about this particular woman, Dido Bell. Is her grandfather was one of the judges and he sat in on the court in the highest court of the land in the UK, whatever, during that time. And he basically created a president which made it where, you know, um, they abolished slavery, at least in the UK at that time. Um, so anyway, the whole point was somebody did a whole movie about it, and it's called Bell, right? And it, you guys should definitely check it out. It's on HBO Max. It's called Bell, and I wanted to watch it because hello, it's historical. It's about you know our people. And it has it's a period piece, so it has like, you know, the elegance, the the period costumes, the drama. It's a love story. It has all the elements of a good story, but it's it's like ripped out of the headlines of real life and things that people went through at that time. You know what I mean? So anyway, I was trying to get her to watch it, and I swear to God, I had to pull teeth. She's like, I don't want to watch these like old lady movies. <laughs> she was like, these movies are weird. She's like, I don't like this. Why are you trying to force me to watch this old lady movie with the old clothes? And then she was like appalled by the things that they was talking about. She was like, what is he talking about? What is he saying? And why is he talking to her like that? That's not right. 
<laughs> oh man, I'm trying to get these people to to enjoy my things in this house is like pulling teeth. I swear to God, he was not having it. But by the end, right, I forced her to watch it anyway. By the end, she was into it. Had the popcorn out and everything. He was like, "Oh my God, I can't believe he did that to her." <laughs> I was like, got her. Got you. Here you go. Got you. That's why I say never say never. You never know what you're going to be doing. But she was about to watch some nonsense. Little Uzi or some nonsense she was about to watch. I was like, uh-uh, we watching this, girl. I was like, you better be glad I can't find a copy of Roots. I'll make you watch that. <laughs> Anybody was subjected to Roots? Like, stop playing. I'll make you watch Roots. Keep playing with me. And even though she in her 20s, I will make her watch it. I do not care. Watching Roots today, sis. She was through with me. She didn't even bother to come in here and try to ask me to be playing nothing. I'd be like, uh-uh. She don't even bother. <laughs> she don't even bother to try to watch no shows with me. It's sad. I'd be sad. I'd be like, come on, please. Watch this show with me. I really like it. Like, no, you're going to be watching one of them weird period movies. With them old clothes. <laughs> oh my God, Roots. Yes, exactly. Exactly. People don't know the torture until you are forced to sit through 25 volumes or 25 episodes of Roots. Okay? You don't know the sheer drama until you are forced to watch Roots. You talking about trauma? I was like, well, rest my grandmother's soul. I was like 10 years old when that show came out. I think it was 10 years old. No, it actually came out before that, but um, because I wasn't even alive when that when it first when the original came out or whatever. But my grandmother wasn't having it. She was like, Gucci? We watching Roots. You need to know where you came from. I was like, uh, what does that mean? I was like, so what is it about? She was like, you'll see. <laughs> you talking about I wasn't ready? You talking about unprepared, traumatized, wanting to pull every ounce of hair out of my head? The trauma that I felt from being, that was unleashed upon me? You talking about I felt like I was on the plantation with him. <laughs> I was like, ooh. He's like, please, why are you doing this to me? He was like, you need to watch it. Speaking of that, I need to do that to my son. No, he might be too traumatized, though, because that's a traumatizing-ass show. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> it's a very traumatizing show. It is. Exactly. Give that as a punishment to your kids. They will straighten up real quick. For real. Shit. Next time they talk about, oh, I'm suffering because you took my phone away, you're going to see some real suffering in a minute. You <laughs> keep playing around with me. <laughs> I'm like, what? Don't play around, baby. But it was traumatizing. No, I'm not going to lie. It was.
was a very traumatizing movie. But it was something we needed to see, so, you know? He is what it is. I'd rather see it than to have gone through it. You know what I mean? So I guess that's, if I have to suffer through it, like, if I th that's what I think about, like, retrospectively when I look at it now. You know? Now I'm like, okay, well, you know, you complaining or whatever, but imagine going through it, you know? That kind of brings me back to reality real quick. Yay! I'm glad you like it. That that rose was looking fluffy and bright. Yes, indeed. Thank you. I'm gonna add a little more more highlights to it. We gotta go in for probably another pass, but ready, ready for her close up. I forgot I was supposed to make this. This is actually supposed to be a rose. Yeah, it's a little rosebud thing. I forgot it was like a little rosebud.
So I'll put a little red down there just to tie into the rest of the thing. Yeah. Thank you. It looks it does look pretty, right? Like, oh my god. Like, that's gonna look cute. Like doing a couple of these illustrations, maybe putting it up on the wall, you know what I mean? I can't really do these sort of detailed illustrations for the 100 flower challenge because, yeah, <clears throat> requires a lot of work. So I can't really do um, that sort of detail for that. But. And I'm going to add... Right, I was gonna outline this, but I don't know what I'm gonna outline it or not because I feel like I like it without the outline. Because I feel like if I outline it, that's gonna give it a totally different feel. I don't know. Um, Are you going to hang your work? Yes. I think I want to hang this one up. Because I always have like, I always like to have like a gallery wall or some sort of thing. You know? Right in there. I always like to have some sort of gallery wall or something. I always like to have some sort of gallery wall or something. Something in the house. Just to remind me. Of my work. <laughs> Do not remind me, but you know what I mean. I'm going to turn that fan off because it's drying out. It's drying everything out. Let me turn this off. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
What do I like better? Uh, sketchbooking or canvas painting? I don't know. I'm really loving like the the canvas painting. I mean, um. I don't know what it is, but I'm really liking the sketchbook as of lately. Like over the last year, um, I've really been enjoying the sketchbook. What's your favorite? And the reason why I've been really enjoying the sketchbook also is because you can really go deep in the sketchbook. Like, you could do a lot of things, you know what I mean? That you wouldn't normally be able to do. That's kind of why I'm enjoying it. Like, you can really play around in the sketchbook. I also like to do, like, journaling and stuff like that. But if I'm doing a really big project and I want to do something, like, maybe I want to sell a painting or I'm doing a commission, I always do the, ca the canvases. But, I mean, I really like doing stuff in the sketchbook. It's more personal and portable, like a journal type of thing. Exactly, exactly. I love that about it, because it's really, it's just more personal to me, you know? It is more personal, you know? Because I do whole journals. Um... Uh, what is it called? Journaling. I like to do journal, bullet, bullet journaling, like figuring out my schedule, figuring out like important things that I really like. Da 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 da. I really enjoy that sort of thing for real. <clears throat> and I like the portability of it. Like if I'm traveling, or like say I move or whatever, and as I get older, it's going to come a day where I'm not going to be able to, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm really, really old, you know? <laughs> I don't know why I think about, like, weird shit like that, but it was like, like, when I get really old and, like, maybe I'm bedridden or something, God forbid, whatever, but I want to still be able to go and, like, create and do nice things. And sketchbook is just all of that, you know? Adding more red to that because it's getting dingy. Because I had already had green on top of that, if y'all remember. Getting dingy, baby. The thing with red, too, is you have to go in and you're going to have to do a couple of layers because red gets um very transparent. So it doesn't show up as well. Very transparent. Yeah, but I always think about that stuff. So. And I even told my children, I'm like, yo, if something ever happens to me or whatever, like, look in my sketchbook and I'll leave instructions in there for you. <laughs> it's so weird. But I've already, like, started planning out, like, my family tree and just whatever, you know? I don't know. It's weird. 
but that's just the way I think about it. It is an intimate area where you can kind of, you can feel safe to do whatever and whatever, you know? Like a diary, exactly. You said, I think like that too. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I just think about those sort of things. I don't know why, but. I also have an, a regular journal that I keep too. Like, um. Explaining it. Uh, uh, it's like a journal that I actually write in, like old school, and I write down my thoughts that happen like every day. Cause I happen to be watching another period movie. <laughs> I happen to be watching another period show called Jack Black. What's it, Jack Black? No, that's, that's a whole other movie. Oh, Gentleman Jack. And I was watching this period show, and the woman in the show, and it wasn't even, it was based off of a real-life story, right? And the woman in the show basically, um, she left, she wrote in her journal every single day. Now, I understand that was the times, right? There wasn't no TV or none of that stuff. Like, you didn't have your iPhone or your notes app or whatever, right? Um, so that was just the times of it. But pretty much every day, every day, this woman would write in this journal. And she would write down every single thing to the point, like, they knew so much about her life that they actually made a show out of her life. That's how much material they had about her life. She wrote in this damn journal every day for 20 years. They had 20 years of content to kind of write in this journal. Uh, I mean, to kind of, like, go go by or whatever. So, I'm not going to add too much of that because that's too fluorescent in my taste. I wish there was a way to zoom in. I need to be able to learn how to do that. Something's going on. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so yeah. She wrote for 20 years in this journal. And I mean, she had every fucking detail of her life in this journal. From who she slept with, who she was talking to. She was in like a lesbian relationship. She was like talking about her lovers and the women she was with. Arguing with men. Fighting with this, that, and the third. She had a nail, how she got beat up one day. I mean, she had everything in there. And it was like... So basically, you know what I mean? Like, and it was like, you would never be able to forget. She had in there, like, what she ate for dinner, da 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 da. Um, who she was loving at that moment, who she was best friends with, how much she hated her sisters. All sorts of things was in this diary. And I was like, holy cannoli, I want that. <laughs> I want people to read in my, like, when, not now, so I keep it hidden, because my daughter, she's always lurking around, she's like, oh, so what's in that book? What's in that book you're writing? Are you writing about me? What are you saying in that book? And I'm like, don't worry about it, gal, mind your business. <laughs> so, 
I'm always like, nah, mind your business. Don't worry about what I'm writing in here. When I'm dead and gone, you could go through it all you want, and you could come to my grave and hate me. Because <laughs> you're damn right I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, talking about you, harassing me, all sorts of stuff in here. I'm putting in there. So, just pretty much that show inspired me to write in this diary. And I'm telling you, it is exhilarating because some days I'm just like out of it and like so sad and like whatever. And I'm just like going through it some days, right? It, it, it'd be like that sometimes. Like, so some days I'm going through it. And sometimes you go through something so traumatic or you go through something that you feel like other people don't really understand. So then I I go and I pull out my journal. And it's an old school journal. It has like a beautiful binding, all that stuff. And I keep it locked away. They can't get to it. My son is always trying to get to it too. He's always like, so what's in there? I'm like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what's in there. <laughs> you heathens, don't worry about what's in there. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Damn nosy ass kids, man. But anyway, um, make a long story short, keep a journal. I don't know how I got on that long rant about journaling, but. Hopefully y'all enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, so I write about a lot of things in there. I write about things that happen on YouTube, things that happen in the world, things that happen in, like, the election, with whatever. I write down a lot of different stuff in that journal. And it gets out so much things that you can never get with the app. Like, the app is just, like, so, I don't know. It's just, like, not real. I don't know how to explain it. And then, like, people can get into your phone. Like, people can steal your phone and be doing a bunch of nonsense or, like, hack into your, um, everything's dried up on my palette, y'all. It's like a Sahara Desert up in here. Everything's dried up. Look at that damn fan. Cause of that thing, y'all. You have to put it in. Pit. No, I, what I do is I hide it away, like in spaces in my studio that they will never go into, or it's hard to get into. Like they wouldn't even think about it or whatever. So I put it in those areas. <laughs> Did they would ask? It, 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 like basically. And they know my studio is a particular way, so they can't, like, go in there and just start doing stuff, because then uh, you already know how an artist studio is. We have everything in the right place, and everything is in the proper way. I have things the way I want them. So I know when somebody's in here doing nonsense, I already know. Like, excuse me, were you, were you in my studio? I know exactly what people are doing in here. When they had no business even being in here to begin with. You come in here with like when you authorize. <laughs> come here when you authorize. You come in here and start fiddling, you know? Fiddling around or whatever. Um, so they, they 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 know they would never be able to get to it without me knowing. So that's why I keep it some places like they're too scared to go into it. Because they don't want to get caught and get, you know, burnt at the stake or whatever. <laughs> mm. So they'll never go against me and just do nonsense. They would have to do a lot of digging to get to it. And it ain't worth all that, you know? That's good, exactly. You can get lost in journaling. Your journal don't, um... Don't talk back. Exactly. The journal don't talk back. You don't do any of that. 
Okay, so I did, I feel like I did as much detailing as I want to do on the leaves. I don't want to do a lot. Um, <clears throat> I really don't want to do a lot on the leaves. These little ribs at the back. Yeah, but them kids are always involved in something. Always trying to be in your business. See what the hell is going on right now. All right, let's work. Oh, uh, let's dry. Then we're gonna work on the bird for a little bit. And then we're gonna pop. We're gonna go back to this rose looking thing, and we're gonna try and yada yada yada. This is gonna look gorgeous inside a. This is a good way, right? Also, this is also a good way to like decorate your house. You can create your own art just in your sketchbook, cut it out, put it into a frame. And do like a gallery wall of all the, your favorite things that you really, really like. You pretty much got to curate your space. The way you want it. Okay, let's try. Let me put this over here. I like how dark it gets during the wintertime, especially in the East Coast. I don't know, like in the wintertime, it, it might the only one that gets like... The winter blues. I feel horrible during the winter time. All right. Alrighty then. We're back and better than ever. So yeah, um Ooh, look at that. So pretty. So pretty. Alright, I gotta put out all new paint because this is ridiculous. Everything's dried up. Like the Sahara does it. I gotta put out all new paint. Look, that looks like a strawberry. That's <laughs> funny. I think I need a different blue paint. Oh, I have it right here. I didn't realize it was there. Never mind. Okay. Red. And why I keep this rag right here so I can like wipe off the excess from my brush because yeah. Weird, it's nasty. It's nasty. Very nasty. Yeah. I mean, you can also do markers, too, because I was just thinking about, like, the different things you'd be able to do, whatever. You could also do markers and things like that on this, too. All right, let's put... His eye is really small, so I'm not going to, like... 
worry too much about the eye. Can't really see it. I'm just gonna put my dab. Can't really see the eye. You can't really see it. <laughs> Little bird. See if I can bring it down, it's getting dark. Going down. You guys could be able to see it a little more. All right. Let me see what this actually looks like, though. I need to see. I was looking at some bluebirds. Hmm. At the bluebirds of it all. <coughs> all right, so we got a little bit of blue in here. A little bit of blue. <coughs> Hold on, guys. I got a call. It's supposed to be like a gray. I put a little bit of white in my balloon. Nabot is on the job. <laughs> <clears throat> Wow, what happened? What I miss?
<laughs> you said they sending stuff back. Got a little bluebird down here. It was a little bluebird. I wonder what happened to um, you know, all the bird watchers of back in the day. <clears throat> I'm curious to know what happened to all the bird watchers. Cause that really used to be a thing. Bird watching and stuff during the, during the eighties. Bird watching. At least that's what the older people were doing. Hopefully I'm representing this bird properly. <laughs> Sorry you guys can't see my hand, but it's a small brush. Just call me the artist formerly known as the fat hand. <laughs> I'm thinking about that comment. Oh, man. This thing has been living rent-free in my head. Yes. Yes, his tail looks so much better. Exactly. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, 
Let me see it all. You know, this is the first time I'm really doing a bird, you guys. I never do birds. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. I never do birds. I think, you know... Once you learn how to paint, like, portraits and flowers, you can paint pretty much anything. Real. Beautiful job for the Blue Jay. Thank you. Oh, it makes me so happy you like it. Because Lord knows. We just out here winging it. Real. Give it up two times for the Jay Bird. <clears throat> Let's get his little feet. his little feet oh my god you guys that is so pretty right like oh my god yes we love that So cute, y'all. So cute. <clears throat> He's so small, so it's hard for you to kind of see. Maybe I can make it more dainty. But not, you know, not in this session, but. Maybe, right? Maybe next Sunday. <clears throat> I mean, I can actually see. Maybe next Sunday you can be birds. Ooh, birds. I didn't know, like, I wouldn't know you guys would be interested in doing birds.
He's so cute, right? Like, what are we gonna name him? Let's name him something. Like J Money. <laughs> like the J Bird. He's like super saturated, but I like it though. He's super high contrast. Like, yeah. That for you, honey. And we gotta dry him though, for real. But right, let's dry him and then we're gonna deepen this a little bit. Yeah. And if you guys are loving this, don't forget to hit that like button. You guys share the video for me. Help assist out. Share it, love it, like it, share it with your friends and all of that. Creative friends. All right, let me move my palette. <clears throat> Thank God for holes, because it's keeping my voice clear during this live stream. <laughs> you guys better be glad I love y'all, because I'm powering through this live stream sick and all, right? All right, hold on. Let's try. Alrighty then. Now this is some really good paper. I love this paper so much. But it's so damn expensive. Um, this uh Arches watercolor paper. You see, it doesn't bend that much. It doesn't warp a lot. What's actually bending is the paper that I have it attached to. That's what's making it bend up. Look how pretty that is, you guys. You guys, my heart. I cannot take it. I love that. We painting our way into the nighttime. We painting out. We painting the night away. <laughs> mm. Um, he needs to be his back needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go in. I just went in with a little bit of a darker color. And I want to make these leaves a little darker. It is so pretty. I enjoy these little vintage paintings. So definitely comment below. And let me know if you like these vintage paintings too. Especially if you happen to be pun to replay. You know, let me know. And I want you guys to keep coming with the feedback to let me know if y'all like this sort of stuff so I know what to paint on Sundays. We're still going to be, you know, um, we're still doing Black History Month for the rest of the week next week. Pretty much the same schedule, but <laughs> look, look how pretty little Jay looks. I like that. 
Very, very lovely. Yay! I, I'm glad you like this. It is pretty, right? I think I'm gonna, like, frame it. And put it up. I love this. Love it so much. This is the sort of things that bring me joy. When the world is dark and people are trying it on Twitter. <laughs> This is where I go into the, into the land of flowers. Okay, off we go into the land of flowers. I just wanted to come in with this. <clears throat> you gotta have shadow. That was another thing I didn't really realize or I didn't understand when I first started painting. Is that shadow and light have to go together. Like you can't have dark, dark shadow without light. You know? I did not realize that at all. At all. <clears throat> Said, try not to let them get to you. The only reason why they do what they do is because they can't. <laughs> exactly. That's what it is, right? Always a troll somewhere. Doing what trolls do, right? Doing what trolls do. Right now, I'm gonna go in. Put some red, light red. Right up over here. <clears throat> Just to bring this out. A little too light, though. Gonna give me way too much.
Uh, let me see. Do I like? I like it a little bit. Yeah, I do like it. I didn't think I would like it with I didn't think I would like it. I do like it. I do like it. Oh, yeah, you're right. It does have thorns on it. And I need to darken up one area. It does have thorns on it. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. I'm very excited about it. All right. Uh... Put all little thorns in there. I think that's the only flower that does have thorns and stuff, right? I think. If I'm not mistaken. That is like the only flower, right? That has thorns. All right, I need to darken. Uh, 
I mean, it doesn't, well, let's just say if you guys happen to do this on your own at home, um, You don't necessarily have to be accurate or do exactly what I'm doing. But today I was feeling like, oh. An old fashioned kind of vintage rose ting. And look at that, we almost accurate to the picture. I know a holly tree or bush has thorns. Oh, it's sticky. I'm just darkening up this thing. Oh, and the leaves are on it. That's prickly. Yep. Woo. And that's it, you guys. We made it to the end. Can you believe it? We made it. It looks beautiful. I'm very, very happy with it. It was a nice therapeutic sketchbook session. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I hope you guys got just as much out of it as I did. And then, of course, you can always check out Patreon if you want to get behind the scenes stuff. You want to see my new course and my new project that I'm working on right now. I've been releasing behind the scenes stuff, or you could just join the newsletter because the newsletter is free and I'm going to be sending out traceables. If you join my newsletter, so all you got to do is join that sign up, do all the things, choose which way you want to be notified of certain activities and yeah and then i'll send you guys out like traceables every couple of weeks 
And that'll be very, very exciting. But yeah, I'm very happy with this project. I hope you guys are happy with it too. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Don't forget to share this if you liked it. Like it if you love it. <laughs> and all the things and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but as usual, I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you next week. We'll be back at it Wednesday, 1 p.m. Same schedule. I will drop the schedule on the community, whatever, or in the Discord. Wherever you are, I'll probably just drop the schedule because I usually do it in Discord on the community tab as well as on Facebook if you happen to be part of the group. So I'll drop my schedule in there, but it's pretty much going to be the same schedule next week. 1 p.m. next week, Wednesday, will either be live or I'll be a pre-recorded video. We're back on Black History Month. We're going to be doing James Baldwin next week and Rosa Parks. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then Sunday, we'll choose what we paint. It'll be the same time. So Wednesday, 1 o'clock, Friday, 3 p.m., and Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. And good night, you guys. Have a good week. I, I love you guys so, so much. Happy Sunday again. And bye.